Hey guys, this is Summer Rain Oaks, and you're watching Plant One On Me. I want to thank you all for tuning in. I have been kind of moving this video around different parts of my house, but it's so difficult to get a good background because I know I sometimes have text on the screen, so I apologize if you can't see the text on the screen. I will eventually get a perfect place to shoot this, but for right now, the lighting is really great um, in my kitchen, so I'm gonna be shooting it here. So I have some great questions this week. A lot of them are around the fertilization schedule of plants, which I think is an apt one to do, particularly because it's the growing season and you should already be fertilizing your plants if you haven't been. So this first question is from Pankrin US, which came through on Instagram at Homestead Brooklyn. What kind of fertilizer do you use? And I'm gonna try to, to group some of these questions together. Evergreen Girl 57 asked also, how often do you fertilize or does it depend on the plant and the season? So as always, great questions. Um, I am going to take you through some of my thoughts on fertilization. Um, I will also do a little screen share so I can show you how I plan out my fertilization schedule because as Evergreen Girl 57 intimated, it does really depend on the plant and the season and when last you fertilize it uh, and all sorts of other aspects of it. So I'll, I'll show you my entire gear for, for my fertilization. For, so firstly, I have a, a gallon jug and oftentimes if you look at fertilization uh, if you look at fertilizers, they'll say half a teaspoon for every gallon. Well, I traditionally dilute that by half. So if something's calling for a half a teaspoon, I'll usually put a quarter teaspoon. And I just mix everything in this jug with filtered water. So I have a hose, I have a filter on that hose, and I fill this up, and I mix it up really great. And I then put the fertilizer and that water that was in here into this handy dandy core gear garden spritzer. Um, I'm sure there's a million of different kinds of ones and I'm not saying that this is the best but uh, this has worked great for me. Um, the thing is you can't really put fertilizer into a regular spritz bottle because it'll all get clogged up especially depending on what kind of fertilizer you have. This one I like, it's pretty heavy duty. Um, I have a garden now outside, so at the community garden, yes. <laughs> and uh, I, what I like about this one is that it has something that attaches to your belt and you could like hang it from there, or, like strap it around your arm and it's good to go. So basically what you do is all you need to do is take this off. You put the water and the fertilizer in here. You turn it back on and then you pump it right around 10 times until you start to feel pressure and then this gold nozzle here you could turn it to the left for it to mist and turn it to the right so that it actually sprays out a pretty veritable um, spray and then <laughs> so it still had some water in here so you can see how that works I'll have to clean that up afterwards and you could also push this depress this down and, and it clicks into here so it can constantly spray. Um, I particularly like this around the house because it does give you a pretty direct spray so I could navigate between my plants because some plants require different fertilizers um, than others. So that begs the question what kind of fertilization do I use and it's all sorts of different kinds. Um, this is just a general liquid plant food it's 10, 10, 10. And basically what these numbers mean is nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, N, P, and K. Those are the things that plants require in order to be able to grow. Oftentimes, um, if the nitrogen is higher, so say it's 20, 10, 10, that's usually for leafier plants. And if that middle number is higher, say 10, 30, 10, it's usually for blooming plants. So what I've done and what I'll show you is that I've created an entire list of all the plants that I have in my house. 
and in what different rooms. And if I have multiples of the same species, which I have plenty of, uh, I will also mark the different rooms that they're in and then I'll just group them because some plants will require uh, um, a liquid plant food uh, like 10 10 10 or 20 20 20 and I always dilute them by half so when so when they say re balanced fertilizer balanced fertilizer just means that all the numbers are the same so let me see what else I have in here so this is the one I have for, it's an all-purpose, it says um, water-soluble plants food, and well, the water-soluble actually then is soluble in water, so it mixes well in water. And this one in particular has a little measuring cup, as you can see here. So if it says on the back of this to call for a half a teaspoon, like I said, I always put a quarter teaspoon in because what happens if you over fertilize, it can actually damage the roots of the plants and then they won't be able to uptake kind of water or nutrients or anything else. So you, you basically want to water down whatever recommendation it has on the back of these. So 20, 20, 20, I'll use for like my philodendrons will take 20, 20, 20, but I'll have, because they're, they're primarily foliage plants, and then I will do a lighter one, 10, 10, 10, for instance, on my, my peperomia and uh, a range of others, which I'll, I'll show you. Then I have these guys. Now this is um, Neptune's Harvest Fish and Seaweed Fertilizer. So this is two, three, and one. And this is one specialized in organic blooms and it looks like this is one, three, one. So, how do I discern which ones to use here? So these are more for, I use these more for my blooming plants. So if, if one of my plants has good blooms and good foliage, like it's a, a plant that has, is grown for both the foliage and the bloom, then I'll use this one. And if there's one that's primarily for the bloom, I'll use this one. And I also have, a special spray. This one's 17822. I know that's not like any even numbers anymore, but this is for my telangia and my bromeliads. What I like about this one is it's kind of a little expensive for how much there is, but I'll just actually spray this right on my telangia and I'll do this once every month. So some of the fertilization schedules that I have for my philodendrons are pretty much bi-weekly. My peperomia, it's a little less than that. It's like once every three weeks. And again, I just try to start grouping them by their genus and that actually helps in determining when um, I do the fertilization schedule. And again, I will show you exactly what I mean with, uh, with the, the schedule in a screen share spreadsheet that'll show you. This is not a water soluble one. Um, this is, I don't use this very much. It's a slow release plant food and it's 1266. So nitrogen is 12%, phosphate is 6% and potassium is 6%. Um, I will use this, I have some evergreens. I have a Fatsia japonica. I uh, use this one on that. Um, trying to think of the other ones that I use this on can't remember off the top of my head, but there are a few that actually prefer this. And then I have these great TerraCycle plant food uh, sprays. And this one is really light. If you do like a little foliar spray, if something's maybe looking like it didn't get fertilized or, you know, is might need just like a, a little good wake me up or pick me up, this is just a really delicate fertilizer that I could just use as a foliar spray. Um, and I don't usually fertilize every week unless it, a plant calls for that. Most of the time it's every two weeks, every three weeks, um, every month. And it's typically during the growing season with some exceptions. And then uh, after that, I pretty much water the plants with my hose in between the times that I'm not fertilizing. And then I usually try to water a little bit with the hose and then add the fertilizer with the water because it's important that the, the soil is moist enough in order for the fertilizer to disseminate through, um, through the plants. So 
I know that was a lot to handle. I don't know if I explained it as well as maybe I could, but at least you get a sense as to what fertilization regime I'm doing. And I will show you uh, on my computer exactly how probably nerdy I am with the whole fertilization schedule. And then um, maybe it's something that you guys could do, or maybe you guys have some better solutions. I know one person was asking whether there are apps for taking care of plants, which is a question that I'll, I will also get to. Um, but for me, I just do it by hand. I feel like I have a much more intimate understanding of my plants that way, and I just cre uh, create everything into a spreadsheet. So anyway, let's go over to the screen share, and I will show you what that's all about. All right, so right now I'm on my computer, as you can see, and I'm screen sharing something with you here. So this is my house plants spreadsheet. It's kind of like my Bible. And I basically go through every type of species, hybrid, variation, whatever it is of my plant. You'll see it here on the, the left-hand side in column A. And then I also go through order family, subfamily. It has all this information that you probably don't need to know as far as the fertilization schedule goes. Um, but I decided that I would do like this kind of Bible for all my plants so I could get a better sense of how I could actually group them together. So you'll see some information about water, fertilization, and then here you get to K and L, columns K and L, and it says when to fertilize a plant and also the fertilization preference, and then you see column M, which is last date fertilized. So I have some notes in here, and then you could see that I have a key and this is a key for different types of rooms um, that the plant may exist in and then a key that's color coded for the, the type of fertilizer that I actually end up using for these particular plants. So you'll get a sense of kind of like how I break it up and you can see that if I keep on going down um, you know the, these philodendrons prefer 20-20-20 but if I keep on going down you might see one that has a high potassium liquid fertilizer that is, is necessary. And these ones, which are 20, 10, 10, this is orange, and I primarily just do 10, 10, 10 for, for those, for like the spathophyllums and the zamiulculcas. So I don't know if this answers your question about how I keep everything in my head, but I would imagine it does just because it, it gives you a sense as when I actually started to fertilize these plants. I got to a little bit of a late start this year. Typically, I would start to fertilize them in early, kind of to mid-April, but you'll see that the last date fertilized here was on 4.30, so it just goes to show you that sometimes we get behind on our fertilizing schedules. But I don't think any of my plants suffered so much, but um, for right now, I'm, I'm keeping with a clean slate. And you'll see that this one in the alocasias, it says feed every two weeks. Yet if I go all the way down, all the way down to my telangia, if I could actually find them. I have, I've determined I have like around 400 different types of species slash variations of plants. And, you know, that's how I keep track of like how many plants I have. I have over probably 540 now. Um... But yeah, it gives you a good sense. And now you see some of these colonchoes and these ones that don't, sedums that don't have any kind of fertilizer in their columns. It's largely because they primarily don't need fertilizer. They're succulents and cacti, and, and usually those are, are fine without fertilizing them. Um, Calathea, maybe I ran by my telangia somewhere here. But my telangia is pretty much, oh yeah, feed once a month or every other month, not in the winter. So that's kind of like that fertilizer schedule. So once, my, my point with that is that, you know, one is going to be every two weeks. So two weeks from 4.30 is going to be my last date that I fertilized it. And then I could refer to this spreadsheet and see that, you know, I won't actually need to fertilize the telangia until 5.30, um, May 30th. So... Um, hopefully this is really helpful for everybody who's asked about fertilization. How do I keep it straight in my head? Um, this is all that I have and all that I know. Um, although if you have really good techniques on keeping your plants fertilized and on a good fertilization schedule, 
please write down in the comments below the video. And of course, if you haven't, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. This particular one is called Plant One On Me, but my YouTube channel is Summer Rain Oaks. And if you haven't yet, follow along on Instagram at Homestead Brooklyn and on the blog at homesteadbrooklyn.com. Bye!